Gear up Spartans, it's time for another episode of Halo the Series Declassified. This week we're joined by one of the elite members of Silver Team, the great Kay Kennedy. Plus, we'll get a very cool behind the scenes look at the show's stunts. Stick around because we're kicking it all off right now, so on me Spartans. Welcome back to Reach. My name is Sydney Goodman, and this is Halo the Series Declassified. This is the show where we dig deeper than the UNSC dug for the artifact, talking with the stars of the series and getting a behind the scenes look at how it all came together. But before we go one step further, I'm getting the sense that our pal Cortana has something to say. Thanks, Sydney. As always, I am cautioning you that there will be a plethora of spoilers throughout this episode so it is in your best interest to be fully up to speed before continuing. Thank you as always, Cortana. Take her words to heart. If you aren't caught up yet, now is the time to do so. But if you're good to go, then you know our guest this week has had quite an eventful couple of episodes. Take a look. Whole lives, all we've seen is targets and missions, but now I... things seeing John. Joining us today is the silver team member known as Kai125, who recently depelleted herself and debuted a rebellious new hairstyle, played by the incredible Kate Kennedy. Kate, welcome to Declassified. Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. So I am going to start off with perhaps the most pressing question. Well, I feel like I have a lot of pressing questions, but we'll, we'll start here, which is, Take us through how Kai's worldview has changed since she's taken the pellet out. So the pellet would suppress any kind of emotional capacity that she's ever had. So the last time she had that was when she was six years old and she was abducted by Halsey. Her taking the pellet out is feeling these kind of emotions for the first time in 20 something years. I think the overwhelming default feeling that she would have is, is rage. And it's essentially going back to being a toddler again and having all of these brand new feelings and not being able to have the language or the any kind of vocabulary to express it. And I think it, it comes out pretty clearly. And curiosity, I think she's she's very keen on finding out how to express what on earth she is feeling for the first time. Yeah, well, and I love I love how you're talking about this because when I was watching it, I was definitely very moved by the interaction, um, but also I found myself kind of, it, it, there was a certain naivety, I guess, or a certain, like, this is kind of her first interaction with somebody on such a human level, and that just really comes through, and I love that layer that you added to it. Yeah, I, I really see her as, as soon as the pellet comes out, having to build it from scratch, so almost, it's this childlike quality to go from, stone cold killer to suddenly having this spectrum of emotions inside of her and not being able to express what that is. Her, the only thing she can hold on to is the connections with the people that she encounters. And Miranda happens to be the first the first one. Yeah, I feel like she got pretty lucky because Miranda seems like a good a good first connection. Yes, yeah, it could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> could have gone yeah, way yeah. worse. She would have immediately yeah. ended up needing to seek like some therapy or something if it was like anybody yeah. else on the ship. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, so let's go through her Kai's process of deciding to take the pellet out. And I'm wondering, was it, Bl like blind loyalty of following Chief's decision? Was it curiosity of, oh, it's okay if Chief did it and I'm curious about what that would feel like for me? Like, where was Kai's head at? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, for her whole life, she's just followed orders. That's exactly what she's always done. But in order to carry out those orders, she's got a, an extreme bravery about her. She's courageous as hell. And I think if she sees John, her leader, doing that in private, I think there's something really brave about her essentially copying it and, and thinking, right, well, if he can handle it, I can handle it. Let's let's go for this. It's kind of to the exact same tune of what we're just talking about, which is in episode five, we have that scene where Master Chief orders Kai to stay behind for battle because she kind of hasn't, her emotions have not been tested yet, which is hypocritical if I do say so myself. Sorry, Chief, but... Yeah what's going on there. Uh, but what is Kai's feeling in that moment? 
I, oh, I find that scene so heartbreaking because it's her one opportunity to get him alone just before battle to have someone that she's, as I said, grown up with for a long time, just a twinkle in the eye of, I'm going through exactly the same as you. Like, what the hell is this? But instead he gives her nothing, not only gives her nothing, but sends her away and doesn't let her fight, which is one of the worst insults for Kai that you could have. She's, she'd be there in a heartbeat. And I think it's, it's well, yeah, it's, it's a lot for her to take away. And I, I find it so fascinating how John and Kai come at this so differently. Like I think John is so, he's, he's more concerned with his history and his origins and who he is post pellet. And I think Kai, it's, she's more in the immediate. She's like, what am I feeling? Who am I right now? It's more emotional as opposed to historical and more of the origins. And I think that's the first time she sees that they're, they're not on the same path. Yeah, and with her relationship with Silver Team, you know, we've gotten to see in these last couple of episodes kind of more of Silver Team and more of the relationships and how you all interact with each other. Um, what is Kai's current, where we see her right now, what is her current relationship with Silver Team and how do you see that evolving as she has her pellet out, but they're still suppressed? I think as episode five grows, there is definitely a sense of Kai wondering whether she's done the, the right thing. Um, I think it feels, she's so used to being a team member that the kind of wondrous curiosity that she feels and what she's trying to explain to Chief may feel a bit selfish for the first time when she's been so selfless for so long. And it's, it's introspective for the first time. Yeah. Oh, I just want to give her a hug. I feel like she'd push me away. She doesn't want my hug, but I just, <laughs> yeah. the girl's going yeah. through it. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, Silver Team, let's talk about how did you bond with them? I mean, the that the relationship on camera is just so wonderful. Uh, did you guys purposely do anything like behind the scenes to really establish that? Or was it a natural, just you all kind of met up and the chemistry was electric? Yeah, they're just wonderful. <laughs> all three of them are beautiful people. And I met um, Tash, who plays Riz, and Bentley, who plays Manic in London, because they're both based in London as well. And we started training together. And I think just going through that kind of rigorous program from the beginnings of the training to training in the suits to getting onto set. I think we've just, we just went through a lot before we even begun before the cameras even turned on. We'd, we'd, we'd had a good like three, four months of hanging out through blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> so we, we, we knew each other pretty well before it began. Yeah. I know Pablo mentioned it was, it was intense, but maybe not as intense as we thought it would be. What was kind of your experience of the training? I I went into it pretty naively, actually, because I, I, I'm quite sporty. So I was like, right, this is going to be some O'Donnell. And then, um, <laughs> so I really enjoyed the training without the suit on. And then <laughs> I will always remember the first time we tried the suit on at um, FBFX, where they, where they make all the armour. And um, we were only in it the four of us for a couple of minutes. <laughs> They're gonna say hours. <laughs> We're like, oh right, okay. The training is gonna have to step up. But there was, yeah, physical training and then also lots of military training, learning formations and all the weaponry. Were there any interesting, I guess, quirks of sex? I think across the board for all four of us, it was um, it was the hell, it was the helmets, <laughs> the helmets. Oh. Because as soon as it got um, in any way warm, our visors were missed up and be foggy and so you'd just be you'd be walking around blind <laughs> i didn't even think about that are the helmets as heavy as the suits themselves or are they kind of like motorcycle helmets yeah kind of like motorcycle helmets the, it, the, they did the costume department did brilliantly at trying to make it as movable as possible and light as possible it, it's just the accumulation of it <laughs> but, but the helmets and and also the um inability to get it off Oh, minor detail. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of wiggle, 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 what? And then we're off. <laughs> so this episode has a 
pretty major action sequence. And as a huge Halo fan myself, I found myself just squealing for joy because the essence of the game was captured so well. Um, and seeing that on on the screen was incredible. Yeah. Did you have any connection to the games already? Or did you have any ideas while you were shooting it that this would be such an epic battle scene that would just connect with fans on such a deep level? At this point, when we filmed episode five, it was one of the last, it was the last episode that we filmed. Just the expanse of that set, it was humongous. It was absolutely huge and kind of awe-inspiring, really. And the the designers just did such a fantastic job. It was it was amazing. And and the explosions, there, there was like ten minutes on the trot, just humongous <laughs> explosions. And then as soon as Unit One finished, you'd hear some mumbling on the radio, and then Unit Two would suddenly kick off. It, it was absolutely massive. It was mad. You've done some video game work before. Let's talk about that. Um, what is it like finding yourself in a live action version? And do you feel like your experience um, kind of in that video game world before helped you uh, prepare for this? It feels so different because with video games, you, you, you know, you're just, it's just a voice. Totally. It definitely helped my education of video games. Like I was a total novice before I started doing voice work on them and I just have such humongous respect for the scripts and the world and the humongous scope of these storylines and strands that are infinite. Because I'd done all my homework and I played I played Halo back to front and and then being putting that suit on for the first time it is it is pretty weird. <laughs> like I've I've controlled I've controlled a version of me before. Yeah, exactly. So without spoiling for future episodes, what can you say or share about Kai's future? What are you excited for fans to dig deeper into? I think the nuance of her, not newfound personality, but her her inner self. Like, you actually just don't know who she is until she takes the pill out because then she becomes human. The following episodes really explore the advantages of being human and also how hard it is <laughs> in comparison to what she was doing and how you're meant to continue battling and fighting in a world where that's all that matters with these very complex emotions coming to the come to the forefront. Mm, okay, well, I say no more. I'm so excited to learn more about Kai and like you said, watch her journey unfold. Um, thank you so much, Kate, for taking so much time and being so generous, allowing us to get deeper into the mind of Kai125. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Please take a moment to enjoy this incoming transmission from behind the scenes of Halo the series. Uploading now. Incoming. There's so many different weapons. Stop it there and take aim. Switch to secondary. I know how the game is played, Cortana. Hi, my name's uh, Andrew Orlando, and I'm the property master on Halo. One of my favorite items is uh, Kai's um, sniper rifle. This weapon is, is one of the hero ones, so it's got a bit of a kicker like this, and, um, and then a LED flash. This has been created um, so that the actors have actually got a bit of something that they can react to. I have an enormous gun. <laughs> it's, it's in the game, it's meant to be the height of a Spartan and Spartans are seven foot. I'm six foot three, so the gun in, in the series is six foot three, um, which is a big, big instrument. <laughs> the hero version of the sniper, I think it weighs about between four and five kilograms, yeah. <laughs> then we've got a Master Chief's assault rifle. Chief! This is one of our dummies. We, we still have created a, a little LED light in it just to give it some kind of action. And I get to wear that beast of a thing around all day, which, you know, that and the, the assault rifle that, that people know and love, that Master Chief gets to, to use, 
just playing with the toys that that uh, that have become so iconic is pretty incredible. While we're shooting and John's doing a lot of walking around, um, he has his weapon mounted on his back, which is basically on the back of his armor. His weapon's mounted like that. This is basically the Magnum. You know, once again, you've got all of the, the kind of detail on there. We've basically put magnets inside the weapons on, on both sides. With the uh, Spartans, their weapons are basically mounted onto the side like that. So we want to be able to, for them to walk and to run, and, but then be able to reach for their weapon at the same time. Yeah, was it, we all have a pistol on us. Riz has two, because she is the pistol meister. So as a, a Spartan 2, um, some of our costumes and our weaponry especially is incredible. <laughs> Toss me that grenade, would you? Here you go. <laughs> I um, have two Magnum pistols, so um, I'm, my specialism is in close quarters battle. So yeah, pistols are kind of my thing. There's a, like a really, really amazing um, choice of, uh, of weapons on the show. Just drop down and come back. That have once again been very stylized per the character or per kind of the world that they're from. So, for example, this is, um, this is one of uh, Soren's powered weapons. So we've got a lot of uh, like really interesting uh, tricked out um, scopes and lasers and magazines and all that kind of stuff on these weapons. It's uh, very, very cool. Action. This is the, the dummy of, um, of Soren's weapon. Um, he's, you know, once again, quite a stylish gentleman. Oh, yes, we are. Three. We've got Covenant weapons. Uh, the Sangeli's, the Sangeli weapons that have, it's like a sword. So this is basically one of the stunt versions of Energy Sword. It is uh, perspex and we've got an LED light through the middle. You can see the size of the handle here. Is, this is one of the 90% sizes for the stuntmen to work with. And then this is a, the, one of the plasma rifles. We were shown the Covenant weaponry um, in a show and tell. Like the Needler was my favorite. I love the Needler. It's my favorite Covenant weapon. Can you put that down, please? It's all right. Okay, this is the needler. You know, basically everything is, has to go through the prototype um, process. There's basically a whole storyline of, you know, progress of the needles, and then it gets to kind of the world where, where we're at now, which is almost like a, like a quartz stone. You get like a kind of clear quartz with like a blue in it, and, and that's, so it's almost like a, a different kind of world, you know? <laughs> I haven't have another word for it. What is it again? Repos. Oh yeah, that's it. So for Halo fans, I think um, they can certainly expect all of the the sort of favorite weapons and vehicles. Bang. Spartans, get in. Moving to you, Chief. Res, on it. Please take a moment to enjoy this incoming transmission from a very special Halo fan. I'm going to patch it through right now. I'm Kevin Hurd. I'm one of the largest collectors of Halo merchandise out there. The size of my Halo collection is quite large. I hate to say it's the world's largest because people in their own right have awesome collections and I, I don't want to diminish their collections. But I do probably have the world's largest amount of Halo items, which at this point is basically a warehouse. How I got into collecting was as a kid, me and my brothers collected 
all of the 80s toy lines. We loved it. We ate it up. We watched the cartoons. We we saw the toys. We, we got them. The thing that really appealed to me about Halo was, first of all, it was a first-person shooter. I had been playing a lot of other first-person shooters, and I thought, wow, here's a new story, cool-looking armor. It just seemed like a really live and active world. And when I came across the first Halo toys, it was, it was just an automatic, gotta have it. My favorite Halo collectible piece is uh, right up here above me. It's a little mega block character. It was a promotional piece. There was like 10,000 of them you could get. You could, you could get off this promotion and only 100 of them were clear. I had sent away and only got the regular one free, which was awesome to begin with. But my friend had gotten this clear one and he was like, oh dude, you're into Halo, you, you, you can have this. And so that just meant so much to me that, you know, my friend was like, you know, here you go. And it, it just made my day. Halo Collector, I, I run because I'm passionate about the toys and I'm passionate with meeting other collectors with different fandoms. There's there's a lot of collecting sites that, that cater to that fandom. I really saw that Halo needed a place to gather. One of the things that really turned my Halo collecting into a passion was going to the Halo Fest. I was like, I need to keep this going. I need to make Halo collecting bigger than what it is. That's when I started gathering other collectors to talk about their collections. And so I, I came up with Halo Collector. I've decorated my car up as a Halo themed car. People have actually like left notes on my car saying, hey, will you marry me? <laughs> That's how it weird and, and and connected you can be because you're you're wait you're waving that flag of fandom and that's just awesome. I, I love having that emotional connection. The way I, I kind of got recognized by 343 was that uh, I was local to the area and whenever they would show up at a convention uh, I was always there and got to talking to people. With all the, the community I had built around collecting, I actually reached out and uh, we started a little group where, where 343 actually met with a small group of collectors. And we started giving them feedback on what we would like to see and what we didn't like. At one point they came to me and they said, we're building this Halo Museum, but we need some holes filled. And I was asked to fill some of the holes they had and put some toys on display. I, I have so many Halo items, I can't display everything. I, I hope one day to actually build a museum and have it all on display and actually have the museum have these monolithic forerunner like structures, you know, where you have basically like gardens out. And so it was like, you're walking through Halo and seeing all the Halo items and, and, and have a little like Halo experience. We're now at over 20 years of Halo. There's a lot of stuff. I love the, the action figures comic books and novels and machinima and now watching this cool tv show it, it's keying off on those on those points like oh yeah this is exactly what i imagined when master chief whips out his gun and you know starts mowing down alien it's all about bringing a new vision to life that's that's how i like to experience the whole world of halo it, it opens up so much more than just just the games that we played. What Halo means to me is friendship. I've I've created a lot of friends through through collectibles, through through the games, at LAN parties, over the net. It's something that we can all just get into and enjoy a wonderful sci-fi fantasy that that just keeps giving. There's even more for you to learn about how Halo gets made. So I'm going to queue up something special that I think you'll get a kick out of. Stand by. It's a very busy day today. Lots of things moving around. Just be careful tripping over wires and bits and pieces like that. Um, and basically, have a good day. Here we go. Ready and one. And action. Five-minute warning, stunt department. 
Hi, I'm Brett Chan, and I'm the stunt coordinator on Halo. Even though you're tripping, okay. you better get shot. You get shot in the back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fall down. And this next episode, 105, which is going to be crazy. No! Copy. You know, we're shooting action, 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 so there's no time to, to relax. And one, and two, and three. Watching a rehearsal, please. Three, two, one, go! Stunt department, eyes to me. There are two explosions that go off in this shot. And three, two, one, go! We're working closely with the stunt team, who are amazing. And I have two stunt doubles, because I'm very lucky. And then I cut in between and do all the other bits on the ground. I can't clear you for combat, Kai. Oh, what about you? If I'm so dangerous, what's that make you? Um, but yeah, it's exciting. Oi, oi, oi! Woo! Spartans, get in! We're trying to create the, the cool moves that our, our Halo Spartans would be doing make him look superior. Master Chief is my character, and his role is providing general badassery. On me! The arm has to stay straight. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Copy that, cool. Awesome. The studs department has been working heroically. All right, guys, let's get ready to shoot. Back. For the first one, let's just see what it looks like with him, with everybody going on back. Go! End of the line for this episode of Halo the Series Declassified. I'd like to thank our incredible guest, Kate Kennedy, for spilling the tea on Kai and to all of you for tuning in. Make sure you join us again next week as we're joined by Natasha McElhone, Dr. Halsey herself, who, let's be real, has a lot of explaining to do at this point. And as always, you can stream new episodes of Halo every Thursday exclusively on Paramount Plus. Until next time, I'm Sydney Goodman. Thanks for watching. I'm John. You're the demon. And that's what the Sangheili call you. Mm. I've been called worse. What can I call you? McKee. McKee. You say you were a prisoner of the Covenant? For many years. Please, if the other Keystone is here, you are in great danger. And they will not stop until they have both stones. You know where they took the other one? The one they stole from us on Aridinus? By now. Um, on a planet called Raskotska. In the star system you call Aspero. Can you show me? I've never been there. It's a holy place for them. You don't believe me. Of course. The Covenant slaughtered hundreds of my people. 
and then flew off with the artifact. And then you dropped from the sky, offering to help us get it back. Tell me why I should trust you.